Now we're going to talk about the microstructures that arise from uh, uh, binary eutectic systems. So we're going to go ahead and use a lead tin example. So if you're familiar with electronics, uh, you might know this is a solder. This is effectively a solder system. Uh, we're going to go ahead and consider slow cooling of four different representative compositions. And when we get through working through all of these compositions, we'll have basically um, covered every potential case that could arise uh, in a, a binary eutectic system. So the first, the first um, uh, case that we're going to look at is where uh, C naught, the system uh, composition, is less than two weight percent tin. So uh, in this case, that would mean that we would still be in this alpha region uh, down to at least room temperature or so. So we're going to look at that first. Uh, then we're going to look at um, uh, a composition of 10 weight percent tin. Um, in this case, this will be a little bit different because um, unlike in the case of the uh, isomorphous uh, material, the binary isomorphous material, we, as we're cooling, we cross the liquidus boundary into the liquid plus alpha region. We cross the solidus boundary as we go from liquid plus alpha into alpha. That's all the same as the isomorphous. But this crossing this boundary is unique to the uh, binary eutectic microstructure. We did not see that uh, in the isomorphous system. So this is unique. Uh, in this uh, particular uh, system. So we're going to go ahead and look at that. Next, we're going to look at a, a eutectic composition. So this is where the system composition C0 is equal to the eutectic composition of 61.9 uh, weight percent uh, tin. We're going to look at what that microstructure looks like. And then finally, after we've done those three, we're going to look at um, this intermediate um, uh, composition of about 40 weight percent tin. So that's what we're, that's the sort of the um, outline of what we're going to tackle. So let's go ahead and do the easy one first. Um, we're going to start with uh, some uh, composition of less than two weight percent tin. Uh, this is a pretty easy problem. So we're interested in what is the microstructure look like at this point, obviously, it's just all liquid. And then the composition of liquid is less than 2 weight percent tin or whatever C0 uh, happens to be. Uh, so then we're going to go ahead and cool to this point. And it's just right inside the liquid plus alpha region. And if we cool to that point, then we know our phases present are liquid plus alpha. We could use the tie rule. Uh, that or draw a tie line rather to get the phase compositions and then use those phase compositions to get the weight fractions. We'd have to zoom in a lot so we could actually see that. But basically, we have some microstructure, uh, some rather some alpha phase that pre is precipitating out from the liquid. So that's uh, we have uh, the structure that looks something like this, where we have uh, alpha particles sort of floating or or precipitating out of the liquid. Okay, now let's move into this region. Uh, this is where we have pure alpha. Uh, so we expect to see uh, all alpha grains, which is what, what we observe. Uh, the phase is present, only alpha. Phase composition, C alpha is equal to C naught. And the microstructure is all alpha grains. So very simple. Um, uh, didn't require any calculations really to do much of that. Okay, now let's go to a little bit of a more interesting case. Uh, now we're at uh, 10 weight percent tin, so uh, a, new, this, a new composition. We're going to start out uh, at the, this liquid point right there. So, you know, roughly maybe, I don't know, 360 degrees C. Uh, microstructure is all liquid, so composition of liquid is the composition of the system and just 10 weight percent tin. Uh, very straightforward. So after cooling, uh, we end up with, uh, let's say at about 300 degrees, uh, we're in the liquid plus alpha region, and we know we have both liquid and alpha phases present, so we can, if we want, we could draw a tie line, and I'm just eyeballing this, this looks like roughly 
five weight percent um, tin, and this looks like roughly maybe 15 weight percent tin. So we would say that um, C alpha equals five, and C liquid equals 15. Okay, and we could compute the weight fractions using the lever rule where we would say that the weight fraction of alpha is going to be equal to uh, just 15 minus 10, which is the composition of the system, divided by 15 minus 5, which is the composition of uh, alpha. And we can compute that to be 0 0.5. And you could run the calculations again for the weight fraction of the liquid, or you could just acknowledge that it's got to make 100%. So 1 minus 0 0.5 is just 0 0.5. So it's basically a 50-50 mixture of liquid and alpha. Okay, so now what happens when we cool to this point uh, at about 200 degrees C? Well, it's exactly what we had uh, in the previous slide when we cooled into the pure alpha region. We have only alpha. Um, the phase composition of the alpha is uh, 10 weight percent, which is what, what we um, what our system phase composition is, and the microstructure is all alpha grains. Okay, now let's go, go to a more interesting case uh, where we've now cooled into, uh, oh, maybe it looks like 120 degrees or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, look at that. Uh, so let's draw this here. So at that location, uh, we, we actually now move from where we had all alpha grains to now where the equilibrium configuration is alpha plus beta. So we, I'm only showing you a portion of the phase diagram, but if you look at the whole phase diagram, you'll see that at this temperature, the composition of beta is about 99 weight percent tin and that the composition and we can I'm just going to eyeball it again I'm going to say that that this is drawing a tie line now through here that that basically goes off into uh, off the screen but this location is about five so we again have the composition of alpha is about five weight percent tin and so then we can compute, using our lever rule, the weight fraction of alpha is going to be equal to um, just 99 minus 10. That's our 10 being our composition of the system, divided by 99 minus 5. And if we just punch that into our calculator, we get a weight fraction of alpha of about 95%. When you're working your homeworks, do a little bit better uh, job of estimating these um, compositions. But for what we're talking about here, I think this is okay. And then we can write that the weight fraction of beta must be then 5%. Or we could we could go through the formula again, but we just know it's going to be 5%. Okay, so what does that mean? That means it's hard to see in this, this drawing, but if I were to draw the microstructure with some... There's my... There's my large alpha grains. What I really have is I'm going to precipitate out beta uh, inside the alpha grain. So I'm going to draw that with a different color. So maybe a blue is what I'll draw that with. And so we end up precipitating out however much 5% would look like inside of here. Okay. So... The blue are beta precipitates. Okay, and then uh, these are alpha grains. Okay, so that's uh, kind of a something to to be especially aware of that occurs only with this uh, eutectic. Uh, type system. We couldn't get that with the binary isomorphous. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to um, uh, the next uh, two examples. Uh,